Hey everyone, I'm Richard, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to properly configure Samsung HDR screens for use with video games consoles like the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro. And joining me to guide me through this maze is our display specialist, David Beaton. Hey guys, how's it going? So Dave, uh, <laughs> call me a bluff old traditionalist, but back in the day it was simply a case that you would plug in a cable to a TV and things would just sort of work. Yep. And obviously, I'm reading a lot of reports on uh, online on forums where people are attaching PS4 Pro to a Samsung screen, trying to get a grip on HDR and sort of not really seeing much in the way of a difference. So I was quite surprised when you showed me the convoluted method that is required to actually get HDR working properly uh, with a console. So maybe you can run us through that. I mean, what's the, what's the deal? Yeah, I mean, uh, unlike um, normal HD, it's not straightforward. There's no plug and play solution. There are a number of uh, settings that you'll have to choose on the TV before you'll be able to actually display a HDR picture. If we demonstrate here, the first thing on the Samsungs you're going to want to do if you're playing video games is turn game mode on. So, okay, dope. Now, game mode's required for low latency control, uh, about 20 milliseconds on the Samsung, isn't yep, it? Yep, it's about, I Pretty think. Pretty much best in class, I think. Yeah, 22 milliseconds on this model, which is the fastest of all the TV manufacturers this year. And game mode you can find in the special viewing mode options. That's the first thing you should ideally select whether you're doing HDR or uh, just standard uh, high definition content. And then if you go down to expert settings, you're viewing HDR, the first thing you want to do to actually get HDR to be displayed on the TV is go down to UHD color and then turn this on for all the inputs. We've already done this, but by default, these are set to off. So yeah, that's the remarkable thing is that HDR isn't actually shown on the display as being active if you use the PlayStation 4 Pro uh, video information screen. I guess unless you have this configured correctly, it just won't even show up as an HDR capable yep, screen. That's which right. Which is <laughs> just, just phenomenal. <laughs> so yeah, that's the that's the essential part in order to actually get the TV to display uh, HDR. And then if we get HDR running, we're in uh, standard dynamic range mode okay. at the moment. In the game? Yes, in okay. the game. So if we get options, display, and then enable HDR. There we go. Okay, it took Takes a while. We got there in. in the end. But it still doesn't look right. No, it's very dim. And here's the thing with game mode on the Samsungs. Uh, the backlight doesn't automatically ramp up. So okay. um, as an example, if we turn game mode off for a second, uh, the TV and movie mode, the backlight automatically Right, now it's suddenly a lot brighter, up. obviously. It looks a lot yeah. better, actually. So that's HDR being displayed uh, correctly uh, as intended, but when we select game mode, these settings don't actually change, so you have right. to manually okay. adjust them. So the backlight is actually sort of not in HDR mode as such at all? No, basically you just have to go to the advanced settings, backlight, that needs to be ramped up all the way to maximum. Right, okay. Um, it doesn't stay that way all the way through, but in order to get the peak brightness of a thousand nits, you have to have that at, at its highest right, point. Okay, so now I am seeing a difference. Yeah, and then the other settings that you should enable for HDR in order to get the maximum dynamic range is Smart LED, which is the dynamic backlight, that should be set to high. Uh, so in dark scenes, the backlight will dim and you get uh, those important sort of dark black levels, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it for HDR. Ah, color space, also you want to adjust to auto if you're not going to be calibrating the set. And that will put the TV into the wider color gamut mode and enable it to track the uh, DCI color space correctly. Okay. So you're basically going to be getting a, an accurate HDR image. So now we are in full HDR mode? Yes, we're in right. full HDR and it is all set up so it's being displayed properly now. Okie doke, right, okay. So maybe you can just run that through that kind of bullet point list of things you need to do from the off? Yep, so um, first thing, select game mode. Then you want to go to UHD color and make sure that all of those options are turned on for all of the different HDMI inputs. After that, you need to select Smart LED and put that to high for HDR content. Uh, color space needs to be set to auto if you're not having a calibration. And of course, the backlight, you need to manually ramp this up to 20 when using game mode. So in theory, I mean, this just sounds incredibly complicated. Uh, well, I've got two questions here. First of all, 
Should Samsung be doing all of this stuff automatically in the firmware? Yes, and in movie mode it mostly actually does that. Right. All the, the key options are selected, except UHD color, which you have to manually do regardless what mode you choose. But in terms of backlight and color space settings, that's set to auto anyway, and that manually ramps up. But game mode, basically, it does work with HDR now, yep. but it doesn't actually sort out all of the settings for you. You have to do that manually. Yeah, you have to do that manually. Okay. And another point which I want to clarify here is, I said earlier, this is applying to all 2016 Samsung screens, possibly the earlier ones. We'd need to check that out. But um, this is a KS7000. You can't actually get this model in the US. No, I th believe it is the KS8000. It shares the same sort of form factor and is essentially the same TV. And you would have to go through exactly the same steps yeah, on the right. US screens to get the proper effect with uh, PlayStation 4 Pro. Yeah, that's across okay. all of the 2016 Samsungs, including the lower end ones like the, okay. the KU. Yeah, yeah, KU actually, that's something <coughs> I wanted to talk about. Now, we previously did a review, you did the review actually, for the KU 6400. And a lot of these lower range screens, they do suggest that they support HDR, but they've only got 8-bit panels, right? Yeah. So they don't really. No, they, there's a... They accept the signal, but they aren't they kind actually of displaying. process a kind of, I don't know, truncated version of HDR. Right. So the 8-bit panel is one of the things, but the others are like wider color gamma. Depending which lower end Samsung you have, a lot of them don't have a wider color gamma. So you're not getting the extra color detail. Right. And the other important thing is they don't have a dynamic backlight. So when you ramp up the backlight to maximum, if you have like a nighttime scene, that's completely washed out. Right. and you're ruining the, the decent blacks that the panel can get. So yeah. you're not really getting the high dynamic range, you're getting a kind of brighter highlights, but not much else. So do you think we should just ignore HDR on a, on a, earlier, on a lower uh, end screen? I mean, I personally wouldn't use it on like the KU we have in the office or on the lower end Samsungs, the, the KU series in general, just because you're kind of sacrificing depth and sort of dynamic range in sort of mid and dark areas. So you're so, actually getting a worse picture. That's yeah, I prefer to have a calibrated SDR image instead mm -hmm. and then only use HDR on TVs that can sort of handle it to a high standard like the KS series here. Okay, good stuff. Well, hopefully that has been useful. I mean, it's not exactly simple as you can see, but if you want HDR to look correct, on your Samsung screen, well, that's how you do it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, hopefully there will be a firmware update that actually does most of this for you. But in the here and now, that's how you do it. Anyway, I think we're going to leave it there. Thanks for that, Dave. Really interesting stuff. Cool, no worries, Rich. And uh, yeah, we're going to probably look at other screens as well, such as uh, Panasonic. We've done that as well, haven't we? Yeah. A lot simpler there, I believe. Yeah, a lot of the settings are done automatically, but there are some tweaks. But that's all we got for now, I think. Uh, thanks a lot again, Dave. And well, thanks for watching. See you soon.